Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I'm doing a video that I don't think I've done in literal years, but it's so basic and I don't know why. It's such an essential video. But for today's video, I'm going to show you my current everyday makeup routine. Now, I don't have an everyday makeup routine. I test a heck ton of products. <laughs> Part of my job is testing different products every day. But I'm putting myself in the situation of my go-to products that if I'm just going out for every day, I want to look nice, I want to look put together. These are tried and true products that I know are going to look good on me every time, as well as using techniques that I am loving every day and is making me feel so pretty. So yeah, lots of tried and trues in here. Lots of newish products that I am just generally loving and I'm really inclined to reach for and all of the techniques that are currently working out for me. I need to do these like every quarter or something because the products are always changing. So I'm gonna start off by prepping my skin with the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Cream. I love this stuff, you guys. It is simply just amazing. It is also very basic. It really is just a moisturizer, but I love the way that it preps my skin before makeup. It makes my skin really hydrated leaving it really plump and just creating the best texture before applying any makeup. While that is sinking into the skin, I'm also going to go in with the Gucci Silk Priming Serum. This is also a really great hydrating primer, but I also feel like it leaves my skin feeling really silky and smooth, which is also great for makeup. So I just like to put this kind of in my T-zone area and areas that are a little bit more textured. I feel like it does a nice job prepping the skin. And the number one thing I've learned through being a makeup artist, talking to other makeup artists going through, through makeup school a few years ago the most important thing is to prep the skin good hydration good priming catering that to your skin needs and my skin feels beautiful and soft right now okay so I'm going for a liquid foundation today I have a lot of foundations that I love but this one is just a tried and true one of the most beautiful liquid foundations this is the La Mer the soft fluid longwear foundation she is really pricey this is an investment. I have a lot of other foundations that are not at this price point that I love as well, but I really love this. This just gives me the most flawless base every single time. So if I want my makeup to look good, I would like to use this. And also it's really pricey. So if I spend my money on it, I'm gonna use it. <laughs> so lately I've been moving away from a sponge application which is very odd for me and out of character. But I've been loving this Rare Beauty foundation brush to blend the foundation out. Now, the way that I find I love the application is, as you saw, take some of the product on my finger and I spread it out, pretty much almost doing 70% of the blending so that we get a nice, even, thin layer on the skin and it's not going to soak into the brush too much. And then I use the brush just to kind of push it into the skin. And this is my favorite method of application, especially if I'm using a brush because that way you don't have to move the product around too much. You're really just pushing it into the skin and that's what you want. You don't want it being swiped or moving around too much. You wanna just push it into the skin. You guys see how beautiful this foundation is? I think it looks so nice. There was a lot of foundations that I was bouncing between for this video, but I really did just wanna go with a long time tried and true that I know <laughs> just looks amazing. And I know so many of you guys love and own this foundation as well. Dior Air Flash is another great one. That's like my special event foundation. That one doesn't have a ton of product in it. I find it doesn't last me the longest. So that one I really only save for special occasions. But this La Mer foundation, I swear, is like the Dior Air Flash, but in a liquid form. So I think you get a little bit more bang for your buck. I'm gonna blend this out. The fact that I've been using a brush is so odd to me, but I just feel like my skin looks so good and it's gonna wear so well. Now for eyebrows, secretly you guys, on the daily, my favorite type of eyebrow product is eyebrow powder. I'm constantly using eyebrow pencils, but there's something about the way that powder looks in the brow. So I also use powder on my clients. So this is the e.l.f. Bite Size Brow Palette in Neutral Brown. I don't play with like the waxy 
basic textures but I think the powders are really really nice I enjoy them a lot this is one of my go-to brow powders and it's so cheap so I'm gonna get an angled brush and I'm gonna start off with the lighter color I'm gonna start off by defining the lower part of the brow just like so I'm gonna take my spoolie brush my brows down I'm gonna go into the darker shade I love this brow palette because I love having the ability to use different colors to add a little bit of depth in the brows I find it makes it look more natural and then with whatever's left just kind of fill in the rest of the area and then powder also just blends so easily and I feel like it looks so natural now if you're going out in the evenings or somewhere where it's gonna be dark and flat Flash photography is going to be taken. I do suggest using something a little bit stronger like a eyebrow pencil. But just for my everyday makeup routine, love the way a powder brow looks. And then I kind of blend it through towards the front. And then I'm going to take my, one of my all-time favorite brow gels. This is the Sigma Tint and Tame Brow Gel. It is so good, you guys. So underrated. I never hear anybody talking about this brow gel. But I swear it holds my eyebrows in place every day without being any Anything that's too intense you know it doesn't like glue the eyebrows down or anything but it does leave them where they need to be and I haven't been doing complete feather brows you guys know I just hate when eyebrows go straight up towards the ceiling but I've been doing kind of a more natural rendition of it to make my brows look a little fuller it's nicer to let my brows grow out a little bit more now and not have to worry about it and then I'll take my spoolie and kind of brush them down a little bit if I want to. The final step to my eyebrows. I have been loving this. The Makeup Forever Artist Color Pencil in Boundless Bisque. I actually bought this during the Sephora sale and I've just been using it to highlight underneath the brow like this. It blends out very easily. I'm gonna use just this ABH brush. I don't know the number. It's completely rubbed off. It's so old. But you see how easily it just cleans itself up? We are gonna move on to the eyeshadow now. Now this is very odd for me. I used to do my complete base, like concealer and everything before this. But lately, I feel like I've just been having a lot of issues with fallout. So I have been not doing my concealer and doing my eyeshadow first. So that way, if I need to clean it by cam but I still have that nice clean canvas that I love to have while doing my eyeshadow because I just feel so uninspired by my makeup if I don't at least have a clean blank canvas to work with so I have to have the foundation and eyebrows done and then I work my way into <laughs> the concealer and whatnot after and it just makes everything look cleaner. Tons of eyeshadow palettes you guys know I love my eyeshadow palettes so I wanted to pick one up that I have been loving lately. This one is new this is the Patrick Ta Major Dimension 2 palette. I think this palette is just scrumptious so I'm just gonna throw on kind of my go-to which is a lot of mattes so I'm gonna start off with a mixture of these two shades right here oh sorry with these two shades right here using a Wayne Goss number 16 brush and I place the color down initially on the outer corner of my eye and then with whatever is left on my brush I'm gonna blend that up into the crease all the way through I enjoy this palette thoroughly if you've been missing my reviews on this since this is a new palette I do suggest to buy this in store and not online because everybody's is coming broken we don't like that so I'm gonna blend this into my blush eventually so don't be afraid to take the rosy shade a little bit out stunning and then we're gonna go in with a smaller brush and I am going to mix the next two shades right here we're gonna add in some depth I'm using tried and true refer number 14 brush fantastic if you have small eyelids I believe they are still having their 40% off sale if you want to pick this brush up But you can see it's great for getting in the outer corner and then blending in and I do like the look of Taking my eyeshadow out a little bit. I just feel like it elongates my eyes Next up, I'm gonna take a flat shader brush and I'm gonna go into the lightest matte shade and I'm gonna use this light shade to fill in my eye just like this then I'm gonna go into the glittery shade because you know I have to have it. And I'm gonna just put that all over 
and kind of softly blend it out. I'm not gonna go in with any more. I don't want the glitters to be too harsh, but I wanna take what I have with just one dab and blend it out. And I'm focusing it mostly in the inner half. I actually could use just a little bit more in here. So fill in the sparse areas where you need to though. But don't over apply unless you want to, <laughs> that's your prerogative. Then I like to take it up nice and high. Gotta have a little glimmer in the look. Gonna go back into the small refer 14 brush and I'm just gonna take just a little bit of the darkest shade and I'm gonna almost not run it along the upper lash line but in the outer half of the upper lash line I'm blending that dark shade out and we will come back to that we are not done with the eyes but I am going to clean up in, in case I had any fallout I didn't really so I don't need too much concealer I'm gonna go with the tried and true NARS radiant creamy concealer I love this for every day I feel like it wears a really long time it does so well in the Florida heat it's a drier concealer formula, but it doesn't look dry on the under eyes, which is why I've been loving this since moving to Florida. I'm going to take my damp beauty blender and I'm going to blend it out. And as we get towards the edges, clean this up. This is why I love doing eyeshadow first, because this way I am able to clean this up. And then with whatever is left, I kind of put it over my nose, down the T-zone. Perfect. -ish. So for the under eyes to set, I'm going to use the Maybelline Fit Me Loose Finishing Powder in Fair Light. It's a drugstore product, but it's so much better than most, if not all, high-end and luxury powders out there. I'm going to get it on my damp sponge. And I don't bake, but I definitely pack on that powder and really push it in because this i swear makes my concealer last all day it doesn't crease when i do this and it makes my t-zone area look super smooth so i'm even going to carry that right in this area where i harbor a lot of pores on my face and you see how smooth and perfected that looks it's amazing and then i'm also going to get the sides of my nose and you see how perfected my skin looks we'll go back to the powder but i love of the look of cream contour and the makeup by Mario soft sculpt shaping stick in light medium is the perfect tone for my skin tone the way that I like to apply this I go straight from the product onto the skin and then I actually really like the applicator that he has here normally I don't like the applicators that come with the makeup products but this does the most phenomenal job of blending this out and isn't this the perfect shade it doesn't look dirty it's a little bit more on the neutral side so it does shape the face but it does still add that little bit of warmth and color needed in the face so starting off with the cheekbone Bones. Gotta get that looking right. Makes the biggest difference. And then let's get the forehead. And then I'm gonna show you the trick for the nose contour. Get it on your ring finger. Rub it between your two ring fingers. And then I just love to use this as my nose contour. I find this is how I get the most natural and straight blend. I'm taking my Esum W25 brush. I'm gonna blend this in. Isn't this great? Look at this contour. You can even use your fingers to blend it in. But this is how I get the best nose contour. I know it looks crazy right now, but I'll show you how I fix it. Can't forget the jawline right here. The jawline, I get lazy and I do my heavy swipes because I don't care if I mess up the makeup here. But when I'm doing all of the other parts of my face, I make sure I'm dabbing like this to blend it in. But under here, definitely swiping. And to kind of correct and even out this nose contour, I'm going back in with my original sponge, pushing it in. And then I'm going back into my Maybelline Fit Me Powder. Get the tip of that and put that right down the middle of the nose, just like that. And now everything is much more subtle. Again, leave the powder to the side. It's going to be your best friend. I'm going to set my cream contour with the Huda Beauty Glowish Luminous Pressed Powder in the shade Light Medium. This is supposed to be used all over the face, but I just love the finish and color of this. Used as a bronzer, it softens everything. It's not too harsh to put over a cream bronzer, so it's the perfect way to set the cream bronzer, in my opinion. Do you see how smooth that looks? Love using this as a bronzer. 
Going back in with my Maybelline powder <laughs> once more. I do like to kind of sculpt down here, clean everything up. Is this a little old school of me? I don't know, but if I want to feel pretty, I put together like I got my ish together, this is what I gotta do, just like this. When I want my skin to look great, as you can see, I use a lot of powder, but I feel like powders really blur everything. So this is the most blurring powder ever. This is the Pat McGrath Sublime Perfection Under Eye Powder. I have mine in the shade Medium. I'm just gonna use this to kind of set anywhere that I notice any pores. I'm not putting it everywhere, but if there's any areas that are a little porous, I just put this right on top and this blurs them right over. Let's do a little bit of blush. I am going to use the Tom Ford Shade and Illusion Illuminate blush in Sun Drunk. Now, I don't think you need to buy this. This is a very, very pricey blush, but it is a beautiful blush, a great, reliable formula. I know it's gonna look pretty, so I definitely do like it. I'm gonna get more of the rosy side, which is the touch of the peach side, and I'm gonna apply this more towards the back of my cheek. I can blend it kind of high to get into the eyeshadow, just like this. And again on this side, and then I also like to apply just a little bit on the nose. Gives that pretty sunburnt look, but I feel like it just finishes off everything and makes everything look super put together. The blush is looking a little heavy. I'm not bothered by that because a blush is always the first thing to go on your face. Let's go back into the eyes. We're gonna finish the lower lash line. I'm gonna start off by mixing these two shades. I'm again using my Refer number 14 brush. I'm gonna look up and I'm just gonna run this all along that lower lash line. And if you hate these little fine lines down here, the key, literally just blend your eyeshadow <laughs> and then you won't notice them as much. And then I'm gonna get just a little touch like a little tap in the deepest shade i'm gonna put that right in the outer third of the lower lash line now before i set my face i'm going to go into a new highlight that i've been loving this is the charlotte tilbury pillow talk multi glow it is so beautiful i'm just gonna mix all of them on my wayne goss number 15 brush i like this for softening a highlight I'm just gonna put that right on the high points of my cheek. I like to put it here as well. I think it looks nice when you turn your head and the light is hitting you. And then again, right here, a little bit up here, but most of it focused on this high area. Getting the lightest shade, popping it right here. Maybe not the lightest shade. That was not the best idea. <laughs> But okay, we did it. And then I'm going to take the champagne shade, pop it in the inner corner of my eyes to lift them and brighten them. Then don't forget right here and right here. Now I do believe in the power of a good setting spray. So I used two, one for a little bit of glowiness and hydration and another for longevity. So for my glowy face mist, I like the Glow Recipe Watermelon Glow Ultra Fine Mist. I think they've repackaged this since, but it's so amazing, so. I just do a nice spray over the face. This is gonna kind of add that hydration factor that I want. Feel free to go in with your sponge and kind of push that into the skin. I think this really helps everything feel more skin-like and hydrated. Then I finish off with my Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray. This is amazing for longevity. All right, let's get into the rest of the eye makeup. I'm going to use the Hindash Hero Line Eyeliner. I didn't love this at first, but now I really, really like it. And I am going to create a little wing and I'm not gonna go all the way in, so just see. I start off on the outer corner and then I fill in just like that. And I'll like take it in just a little further, but nothing too thick. And again over here. This eyeliner really allows super precision. Now I left the inner corner blank because my favorite thing you might have noticed has been doing the inner corner wing. So I'm gonna take a really small pencil brush and I'm gonna use this shade from the Patrick Ta palette because it's not gonna be as intense, but it's also gonna go with the eye look I have. And I'm gonna start off by filling in the under inner eye corner like this. So this needs to be shadow right here. I'm gonna get an angled brush. This is from ABH. And all I'm doing is extending it just like this. Very small, subtle strokes. Literally an angled brush is gonna save your life with this. It makes it so quick and easy. Now if you find you do mess up or you do want to sharpen it, 
get a small brush like this, put it in a little bit of concealer, and you can easily use it to clean up. I really just showed off for you guys. I normally need to use that concealer to clean up things, but this is looking pretty good. I do find for days that I want it to be more dramatic, I will extend my wing even longer, and I will extend this even longer, but I think we're good here. This is all I need to do kind of for that everyday effect. Everyday makeup for me does not mean quick natural makeup, okay? <laughs> I'm going to use my Refer Eyelash Curler. Not that curling my lashes does anything for me, but I like to pretend that it does. Love the shape of this. It fits my eyes really well. One of my go-to mascaras is the Giorgio Armani Eyes to Kill Mascara. One of my all-time favorites. So I'm gonna coat my upper and lower lashes real fast. Put most of the emphasis though on my lower lashes because you know I'm I'm gonna do falsies. And then of course I have to do lashes, so I picked the Lily Lashes in the Style Con. These are one of my favorite, favorite everyday lashes. So I'm gonna pop these on off camera because it's gonna take me a while to clean those and get them ready. And we're gonna finish off with the lips after that. Okay, lashes are on. I just, oh, I love the winged out look of this lately. Let's pop on some lips. One of my favorite pinky lip liners is Love Trap from Charlotte Tilbury. So I'm gonna line the outer edges. And this is close to my natural lip color, as you can see, so it really makes my lips look juicier. And then I like to cover my cupid's bow and go a little over because it makes my lips look a little bigger. Emphasizing in the center for my lips always looks a little bit more natural. I don't know if you guys can see, but it is getting darker sooner than I thought it was going to today, so I'm losing the natural daylight. So I'm gonna use this Charlotte Tilbury lipstick in Super U. I wanted something that was close to my lip color, leaning a little bit more mauve rosy because I feel like that makes my lips look more plump. So I'm just gonna pat this on. And if you don't know, Charlotte Tilbury go to lipstick. I always reach for her lipsticks because they're just such good quality. I like that. I got a little messy out here, so I'm just gonna clean it up. Always reaching for my trusty Pat McGrath lip glosses. Let me see. Today, we are gonna go with this color, which is a little bit pinkier. This is aphrodisiac. This is one of my all-time favorite lip gloss formulas. All right, let me get myself together and I'll be right back. All right guys, here is the final look. Unfortunately, I lost to the sun. It is about to rain, so I don't have the best lighting right now. But here's the final look. The only thing I will say, the lashes uh, need to be thrown away after this. But other than that, this is a great example of techniques that I love, products that I'm loving. If I were to have an everyday makeup routine, these are all products that I would be reaching for doing this kind of style of makeup. My everyday go-to makeup routine, as you can see, is not natural. That's a whole separate video. I can do a natural version a little bit quicker as well, but this is like when I want to look good, when I have my me time in the morning, this is what I'm going for. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I'm playing with some makeup, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye, guys. Have a good one.